Tanya here. Um, so this video is geared more towards the coordinators and the individuals who will be hosting the program. Um, most of this video is going to be focused on that flowchart, that one visual aid I provided in the webinar. I also offered it as a PDF version on the sale website. So if you want to crack that open and follow along as I take it down step by step and give you guys kind of suggestions and tips, things I learned that might be really helpful. Um, so in like two seconds, I'm going to open that slide up. And like I said, I'm just going to break it down for you guys and just share what I've learned and where my mind was thinking when I created it. Now, before I get into the flowchart, I did just want to mention a couple of factors that uh, played a big part in why I had to run it this way. One, the date and time was already set for this program. Students were already invited to come this day. We also didn't know how many of the M4s were going to show up because a lot were graduating early. So I didn't have a lot of wiggle room to set up multiple start times. If you have room to do that and you have faculty that are on board with that, certainly have multiple start times. It'll lessen the blow. It'll kind of keep things a little bit more organized for the coordinator and then if you have multiple start times, chances of you having to hire on more staff will probably not be likely. Where here in our program, when I'm talking through this flowchart, you'll see that because we were running um, debriefs and scenarios simultaneously, I needed extra staff to kind of help out to make sure that we could run events or overlap events during the program. And again, you'll get more detail. I'm about to run through the flowchart with you guys so you guys can see what I mean. But certainly, in retrospect, could I have done things differently to lessen wait times, to not have to hire so many, so many, so much staff? Yes, there definitely are things that could have been done differently. But what I really wanted to focus on here is the flowchart so that you guys can kind of get your mind set in this virtual space before. Um, you transition to tell us in. Okay, so first things first, on this chart, on this flow chart, you'll see on the bottom here on the X axis, I gave time. I didn't give every like five or 10 minute increments of time, but I gave the start of every event and that the event either includes the scenario or the debrief that was happening. So you'll see that there multiple events were definitely happening simultaneously in different ways. Down in the right corner, you'll catch a key here that'll help you guys kind of interpret the flow chart a little bit better later on if you're looking at it on your own. Um, but one thing I definitely wanted to point out here is that I used color. I designated different colors per group, per scenario. I know that seems like a lot, but when I walk through the flow chart, you'll see what I mean. And those colors, really were for me and the sales staff that I hired so that the staff, again, I created teams of staff. I made them different color teams. So the yellow team knew when they were up, the green team knew that they were second, and then orange and blue were for the second scenario. And again, those teams knew when they were up to, to run a scenario. So at this point in my program, I am now the only staff member in the main session with the students. My the sales staff, including operation specialists, techs, nurses, even the faculty that are participating in this scenario or in this program have been sent already to the SIMBE and they're preparing for the scenario. So right now, currently in the in where this flow chart is, the timeline of this flow chart is in the main session. I am providing students with their orientation. I am getting them set up for the scenario. I'm providing a fiction contract making sure that the resume settings are all set. So that's where we're at. As soon as I get the green light for my operations specialists, which again, they're in the sim bay, they're in one of the breakout rooms. As soon as I get the green light from them, I am now able to send over group one to the breakout room one, which I named sim bay. So group one now will run their 10, 15 minute scenario, however long it is. And as soon as they're done, they will have to come back to the main session before I can reassign them to a new breakout room. So every time you guys see a diamond on here, that's the students coming back to the main session so that the host can reassign them 
to go to a new breakout room and I sent group one to go hang out in debrief room A, which was the second breakout room that I created. While they are waiting, group two gets sent out to the sim bay as soon as again I get the green light from my operations specialist that they're ready to start the next scenario. Then when they're done with their scenario, of course, they come back to the main session where then I reassign them to go to, to debrief room A. While now this group is debriefing with the yellow team of sales staff, this is where the colors come into play. So the yellow team, the techs, the nurses, the SPs, even the faculty that ran and observed group one and two scenarios, they are all now together in the breakout room debriefing, which is why I needed a second team of staff because now um, we can run our third group scenario. So now group three goes to the breakout room and the green team of sales staff will now run this session. Same scenario, just third session now that we're running. As soon as group three is done, same thing, we come back to the main session, the little diamond, I reassign them and they go hang out in the third breakout room that I renamed debrief room B. While they're waiting, group th four now will also go run their scenario. And then again, reassigned and sent to debrief room B. So now the green team of sales staff that ran these two scenarios, three and four, will now go sit in the breakout room with the faculty that was also there observing and they will debrief. So now everyone's run their first scenario and they're either done or in the middle of debriefing the first scenario. So as soon as my sim bay has been cleared out, set up for scenario two, I get the green light from my operation specialist that everyone is ready, that my orange team is ready for scenario two, sessions one and two, we can run this entire flowchart all over again for the second scenario and repeat the exact same order of things right up here. So now you can start to appreciate why I used color, why I needed tuple staff. Um, yes, there was questions and concerns about the amount of wait time because as you see on the timeline here, group one started 945 and it wasn't until about an hour later that group four finally got their first scenario in. Um, I mentioned before, I really had no wiggle room for multiple start times, but with a large group like this, where my limiting factor is one sim bay, I would definitely consider multiple start times, maybe do a two hour session for the first two groups, get their two scenarios done, get them sent home, and then bring in, bring in groups three and four, maybe later about 11, and have them spend two hours running through their scenarios, doing their debriefs, and then send them on their way. Of course, if you're about to, as a coordinator, if you're going to change the program's times like that, definitely get your faculty involved, get, um, get their approval of everything, because if they need to be a part of the program, then they certainly should know how their program's being changed to fit the constraints of this new platform. So hopefully that breaks it down a little bit more for you guys. I'm really excited about this chart. I hope it helps you. You could even add further detail to it. Um, I even, I printed this out and I hand wrote time frames so I knew exactly where each group and such were supposed to happen. I shared this image with all of my staff so that they also knew when their team was up to run a program or run a scenario, excuse me. Um, so it also just kind of breaks it down and shows you the different breakout rooms and how the students are supposed to move from main session to breakout room, back to main session to another breakout room. So hopefully this will help all of you coordinators and hosts out there kind of run your event.